the old. I, I, I need thee. Somebody need them out there. Every hour, I, I, I need thee. Me now, yes, Lord. my Savior, I come to Thee. Oh, Heavenly Father, this morning, Father, I come to Thee yes, because there's no other person that I know I can come to. I can take my problems to you. I can take my situations. Yes, Lord. And I can take all my storms to you, my Father. Believe it, Lord. And then, Father, first of all, this morning, I just want to thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength yes. this morning. Yes. And then you clothed me in my right mind this morning. And, Father God, I want to thank you for my yes. lying down and my early rising this morning. You did it, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the bed that I laid in with my cooling boards and all the sheets that I laid in between was my winding sheets. And Father, you let my moments roll on just a little while longer. Yes, you didn't have to wake me this morning, Father, oh, but you Lord. did. You allowed me to come to the sanctuary to lift you up this morning. One more time. Somebody out there know my story. Hey, hey. How the Lord lift me up and yeah. he turned me around and he placed Woo. my feet on solid ground. Yes, and Somebody out there know what I'm talking about yeah. right now. Somebody been through some storms just like me. And I just want to thank you, Father God, for being so good to me. So good. You picked me up, you turned me around, yeah. and you placed my feet right back yeah. on solid Lord. ground. You didn't have to do it, Father, but you did. Uh, and then, Father God, uh, I got out of my bed this morning with all activities in my limbs and I was able to walk through the house this morning and I found that I was clothed in my right mind and I had food on the table and then I had clothes to put on my back shoes on my feet Father God you've been so good to me Father God you've been so good to me oh Father oh Father touch somebody right now Father somebody's going through something situation yeah, storm Lord. but father god if they just be patient let you take them through that storm yes, when you come through that storm you realize that you'll yeah. be a better person oh father yes, oh father yes, we lean yes. and depend upon you father yes. we can't lean on nobody else nobody. we rely upon you for everything yes. father god Oh, you visit somebody in a hospital yes, right now. The doctor said there's no way. But Father God, you walk in the sick room. Yes. You touch the foot of that bed. Uh -huh. Then Father God, you open up their eyes and no, 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 oh, no. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank Father, you, Jesus. We thank need you, you Jesus. right now, yes. Father. Come by St. Yes. Paul right now, Father yes. God. Touch everyone right now, Father God, yes, that's going Lord. through a storm. I don't know what you're going through, but yes. you do, Father God. Yes, Bring them through one more time, yes, Father. Lord. Give us another day. One Give us another day, hour, Lord. Father, right. because we need thee every need hour. Thee, but St. Paul needs you right now. Yes. We need you right Let's now, go, Father Lord. God. Oh, Father. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So good, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, Father, I'm asking you to touch our pastor and the right first now. lady right now right and the entire it, family, Lord. Father. Strengthen them each and every Please day as the Jesus. days go by. Please Make the Jesus. day better than it was yesterday, yes, Father. Yes, Lord. And then somebody's calling on you right now because Jesus, of their family, their Jesus, children, their jobs, Jesus. their cars. Whatever they calling on you, Father, when they ask from a pure heart, yes. you're going to do it for them, Father yes. God. Touch the uh -huh. preacher of this hour. Yes. Pass yes. Dunham, Father God. Do it, Lord. Yes. 
whatever he have in mind of sharing with the congregation, Father Give him a word. Give him that word, Father God, and oh, let him speak God. it, Father. Use him, God. Touch Reverend Stevenson, yes. Reverend Brown, and all the ministers today, yes, Father God. Yes. Because we need you, Father. Uh -huh. We can't do nothing without you, but through yes, you all Lord. things are possible, Father God. Yes, Lord. And I know one day, Father, yes, to your will. when it, this time is over, when this time is over, Father God, yes, Lord. I'll be there to see you face to face, Father. Yes. Where I can worship and praise you all yes. day. No more nights. No more. No more sickness. No more. No more heartaches. No Hallelujah. more pain. No more. No more COVID. No more oh, cancer. Say that. Say that. And then, Father God, yes, Lord. right now I'm going to continue praising you from the rising of the sun uh -huh. and going down of the same. Yes. These blessings, Father, and all other blessings that I'm asking in your darling son Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you know. Hallelujah. You know we couldn't do this Hallelujah. devotion without you. Can you give God a hand clap? He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, give God a hand. Hallelujah. Praise him while you can. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, Power in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh the name I know. Oh, there's healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, you can't tell it like I can. You can't done for me. You can't tell it like I can. What he's done for me. Oh. What he done, what he done, what he done for me, what he done, what he done, what he done for me. I get joy when I think about what he done for me. I get joy when I think about what he done for me. I don't know what you come to do. 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 I come to clap my head. 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 I come to lift him up. 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 I come to stomp my feet. 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 I come to lift him up. 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 I come to clap my hands. I come to clap my hands. I come to hear the word. I come to hear the word. I 
I come to hear the word. I come to hear the word. I come to hear the word. I come to do my day. I come to do my day. I come to do my day. Years, amen. It's good to see a packed house this morning. Yeah. Amen. Look around. I believe, Pastor, it's the most we've had since the pandemic. Amen. Amen. But we're going to go ahead and go to the throne of grace. You all pray along with me. There's no way I can remember all of those prayer requests. Amen. But that's okay because I can't do anything about it. But God has heard your cry. And he is the only one who can do something about anything. Amen. So as I pray, you all pray with me. Amen. Let's go to the throne. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you right now. Father, for just one more day. Father, we thank you for giving us a mind, God, to seek your face. God, as we have entered into your sacred and holy temple. Father, and we pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would reach down from heaven. Father, and touch each and every last one of us, God, in a special way. God, touch us in a way that we've never been touched before. God, we pray right now that you would let your spirit fall right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your son and the sacrifice that was made on Calvary's hill. Thank you, God, for the blood. The blood that has never lost its power. The blood that covers us, God, and washes us white as snow. Father, that it blots out all of our transgressions. In the name of Jesus, God, we are eternally grateful for that selfless act that was made on a hill called Golgotha. Father, now we have a right to the tree of life and eternal life in heaven with you. Thank you, Jesus. For that great sacrifice. Now God you have heard the petitions of your people. We pray right now God that you will begin to work it out God. In the name of Jesus. Heal the broken hearted God. In the name of Jesus. Heal the sick God. In the name of Jesus. Uplift God. In the name of Jesus. Touch God. Each and every family, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch us, God, in a mighty way. Father, you said in your word that perilous, evil times will come. But, Father, we thank you that you have protected us. Father, that you've given us peace. That you have provided for us, God. And most of all, God, you've given us power. Continue to keep us, God, along this tedious journey. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch each and every family represented in this house today, God. Touch each and every church, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, that the church would rise up in the face of adversity. In the name of Jesus. Father, and when it's all over, yeah. when it's all over, yeah. Father, all we want to hear you say yeah. is well done, yeah. thy good and faithful servant. Come on up just a little higher and enter into the joy of the Lord. You have been faithful over a few things. Now I will make you ruler over many. When all is said and done and there's nothing left to say or do, we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory that is due your name. It's in the mighty, matchless, precious name. In the name of the one 
who was Lord, Savior, and King. Nonetheless, Jesus the Christ, who died on Calvary's hill, was laid in a bar tomb. But early on Sunday morning, he rose again with all power in his hand. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks, and we all shout with a loud voice, amen, amen, amen. amen. and thank God. So, you know, I prayed. I prayed and I asked God who could be the speaker of the hour. I know this family because this family, to me, is family. I've watched them for years. Their father was a prominent figure in this valley all through the Bay Area. Eight sons, majority of them all pastors. And this particular man I have always loved to watch how he allows God to use him. He was a deacon under his father. And I watched him and the Lord blessed him to go on to the Monterey Peninsula District and there he has been serving faithfully. We got the opportunity to begin to work together. The Lord bless us to bring in arms with the Sacramento Theological Seminary and Bible College. And when I went to his church and saw over 20 graduates, men and women, under his leadership, it really stuck in my heart that God is using not only his servant, but he's elevating his servant. He's a preacher's preacher. You see, us preachers who may have been myself 28 years, you need people that you can look up to. People who will stand and tell the truth. Because the Bible says that the truth will do what? You see, the church needs order today. People don't like to follow order. Order is all about God. We sing that song, Order My Steps. And this pastor is about order. Amen. One of his faithful soldiers serves with me on school. Decent and order. And that's how things are supposed to be. I'm so proud to introduce, I call my big brother, amen, senior pastor of the Friendship Baptist Church, none other than Reverend Dr. Anthony Dunham. He will come and deliver our word. Will you show some love for him as he comes? Let us stand to receive Dr. Dunham as he comes. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. <laughs> for the things he has done. He has done great things for us. And we all can say hallelujah. And thank God for saving me. To the officers, to our ministers, to our pastor. Thankful to God for this invitation from my dear friend, brother, and colleague, Dr. Evans. That we could represent this morning. Uh, God, don't, God knows folks don't have to be kind. But just... Being kind to us, we owe you a thank you. Yes, Grandmama said, when folks been nice, you ought to show appreciation. Yes, to the St. Paul Baptist Church family, we appreciate your presence and solicit your prayers on our behalf. Uh, I see some close family friends here that are here. I, I, can I acknowledge Brother Fred Quillentang? Amen. Amen. Brother Fred, stand, Brother Fred, just stand. Thank you so much. This brother, this brother came up to the church and up in Seaside. He helped us expand the building and, and classrooms in 2008 uh, up to, I think it was $550,000. And he, he built it for us and completed that package and 
Hallelujah, we got that thing paid off in 10 years. But this man's effort blessed us. Give him one more big hand. I thank you, brother. Thank my lovely wife, my beautiful wife. Let me ask her to stand so won't none of y'all young fellas look at her. I don't want her. Uh, bless you, baby. Love you. Love you, baby. I'm, I'm an old man traveling with a young, beautiful wife. Thank you for coming, baby. God bless you. To the Friendship family, we thank them for allowing us to come down and share a word. We are grateful uh, to allow, be allowed to uh, declare our conviction of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, I believe church ought to be order. And I just, I'm silly enough to believe it ought to be ordered by the Lord. And since he's the one that died for it, since he's the one who's coming back for it, we ought to make sure we do things pleasing in his sight. And it's, it's, it's not always comfortable. It's not always uh, convenient. Amen. But I, I've been pastoring now for almost 29 years. And, and, and I've discovered some things when you stand on the word. You'll lose some friends. But you'll gain some faithful folks that are willing to walk with you along the journey. Am I right about it? If you would stand with me, turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy, the third chapter, verses 8 through 13. Is that right? Verse number eight says, likewise, must the deacons be great, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. We're ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you. So reads the word of God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for another opportunity, another prayer privilege, another preaching moment. We pray that you will speak to us, that you will speak through us. Use us as an instrument of honor that eyes will be open to see you that chains will fall off and set captives free we pray we pray whatever's hindering us now move it remove it and then god give us clear vision to be impacted by what you got to say speak to us now in jesus name amen and amen just for a little while thank you sir we want to talk from your theme. Faithful servants of the Lord. Thank you. Faithful servants of the Lord. This message is designed to encourage the servants of our Lord to be faithful in their service. Servants are ministers of the saints to 
the saints as they serve in their several ministry capacities as directed by the pastor. I recognize your theme and I honor your theme's pericope. But I would like to incorporate all parties listed that we represent this morning's annual day for the deacons, the deaconess, the mother's board, and the minister's wife. Because I dare not qualify all servants of the Lord as deacons. But if we can peruse the parameters of this pericope and tiptoe through the text as established by the deacons call and classification, we can glean certain aspects, so to speak, or certain characteristics compulsory in the order to find an effective servant of the Lord. Syllogistically so referencing of the Lord suggests under divine authority of Jesus Christ, of the Lord, categorizes and qualifies one as totally committed to the cause of Christ. It is with that designation comes the foundational truth that as servants can be classified and den identified by several truths present in our text. While perusing my library, I found a poem that plainly corresponds to the servant's ideology. Poem said, I am a servant in the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the word, all my weapons of warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army, and I am an enlistment for eternity. I will not get out, sell out, be talked out, or pushed out. I am faithful, reliable, capable, and dependable. I am not a baby. I don't need to be pampered, petted, powdered, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I am a servant. No one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, allure me. I am a servant. I don't need to be cuddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn around. I can't be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. Battles cannot beat me. Devils cannot defeat me. Governments cannot silence me. Money can't buy me. People can't disillusion me. Sickness can't stop me. Weather cannot weary me. And hell cannot handle me. With, a, with all of these qualifications, can anyone say, that your servant role has best represented your pastor of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you desire to be a faithful servant, I've got good news for you this morning. First thing that pops up to me instantly is servants must be faithful to the scriptures. Servants must be faithful to the scriptures that's it's right there the text first timothy 3 and 9 holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience that that that, that was a time when we rep respected god's word that, that that was a time when we treasured god's truths a, a time when we hailed god's word as the final authority and like like king david we we found our delight in god's word and meditated on our god's word day and night resulting in us being planted like a tree by the rivers of waters we found psalm 119 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path we loved god's word we 
we, we love the holy scriptures. Servants must be faithful to the scriptures. Believe the word for salvation. Study the word for sanctification. Faithful to the scriptures. When, when, when you are faithful to the scriptures, you'll find yourself in Bible study regularly. When you pick up gems and nuggets of wisdom that will bless your day. And it is in Bible study that you will learn how to withstand the fiery arrows of Satan. Holding the mystery of faith suggests you will not be tangled up by the tyrannical tyrants of truth. Who randomly and viciously violate the word of word with deceptive expertise of scripture flippers faithfulness to the scriptures will have you walking by faith and not by, by, by sight. You, you will be guided by his truth. Faithful to the scriptures will have you loving your enemies. Faithful to the scriptures will have you doing good to them that despitefully miss. If I were you as a servant and you want to be faithful, you got to be faithful to the scriptures. Yeah. Not only a servant faithful to the scriptures, but you must be faithful to the shepherd. Faithful servants will line up with their shepherd. And by shepherd, I'm speaking of the pastor. I do recognize him as the under shepherd but in this section we want to refer to the pastor as the shepherd faithful servants support the shepherd faithful servants submit to the shepherd there ain't but one head at the church and we ought to appreciate the gift of the shepherd given to us by God somebody already know where I'm coming from. The, the Lord said, I will give you pastors. Now, to give is a gift. Is that right? I, to give is a gift. And I'll always have said and will continue to say, you, you will know how much you love the giver by how you treat the gift. God gave us pastors after his own heart. And it's up to the servants to submit to the leadership of the under shepherd. When God let the children of Israel out of bondage, out of Egyptian captivity, two to three million people. But when God got ready to speak, he told all the kids, all the children, all the people to come together. And then he hollered out, come here, Moses. God don't have but one contact in each physical church. So I would encourage you to support the shepherd's agenda. Support the vision that the shepherd uh, has been given from God. Can anyone remember the book of Revelation when Jesus spoke about the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. The letters were postmarked to the seven churches, but in care of the seven angels. Faithful servants will recognize who the shepherd is. And help the shepherd do his job. Help the shepherd keep the sheep in the corral. The shepherd allows you to serve under his leadership. Remember now, whoever he appoints, he can also disappoint. Y'all didn't say nothing. You serve under his watch. You will serve help, happily because he has to give an account. Uh -huh. Hebrews 13, 17. Oh, Obey them that have 
the rude, yeah, somebody help me here. And submit yourself. For they watch over your souls. As they that must give an account. Then it says that you do, may do it with joy. And not with grief. For that is unprofitable unto you. One of the shepherds duties that day will be to talk about your conduct of how you have made him feel whether you like it or not whether you agree with it or not I'm going to close in B son whether you submit to it or not fact still remains there is much authority in uh, yes the pastoral thank you sir office so I say to you this morning that uh, servants must be faithful to the scriptures and, and, and servants must be faithful to the shepherd. But let me close with this thought. Servants must be faithful to the Savior. Can I get a witness that says to us that a servant first of all must be saved mm. it's bad to have a servant who hasn't been born again ain't God alright is right here in uh, Acts 6 and 3. Send, uh, the church was told to look out among you seven men. Is that right? But I read a little further where we'll discover that they must be full of the Holy Ghost. Ain't God all right? And we all know when someone is full of something, what they gonna act like. When someone is full of liquor, mm, they act like they're drunk. Mm, and when someone is full of pride, they act like they stuck up. Ain't God all right? Lot got full of liquor and had an incestuous affair and had a baby boy by his own daughter. Ain't God all right? King Nebuchadnezzar got full of pride and got beside himself and had to live outside like an animal. Mm, ain't God all right Judas was full of greed and sold a savior for 30 pieces of silver but he lost his life at the end of a swinging rope so but when a servant is gonna be full of something don't let yourself be full of what people say about you don't let people fool your head with how great you are don't let nobody get you full with who you think you ought to be but you ought to be glad to just be a servant a good servant is one who understands what his role is. A faithful servant 
is a praying servant. A praying servant is a powerful servant. <laughs> Keep on serving. Serve on. You ought to keep on serving. Get down on your knees and tell God all about it. Father, I stretch my hand up to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whether shall I go? Ain't he all right? Anybody know he's all right? Wave your hand and just say yeah. Shout back to me and say yeah. If you know he's good, say yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm feeling a little better. I'm so glad I know how to serve. I'm so glad I don't have to have an example like my father. My father served. He served eight boys. Had one son that died. He raised seven boys. Ain't God all right? We had five brothers that's been pastors. But I don't have my daddy as my example of a good faithful servant. I don't have my theology teacher, Dr. Rowland, as my example of how to be a faithful servant. I don't have Dr. Evans, a faithful servant of the St. Paul Baptist Church, to be my example. But I've got an example by the name of Jesus. Anybody know Jesus? I say, do you know him? Why don't you stand to your feet and shout to somebody? Do you know him? Yes! Yes, I know him. Stand up and be a witness. I'm so glad I know he served. Anybody know he served? All the way to Calvary. Friday! 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 He died for your sins and mine. He died for your sins and mine. He died for the sins of the world. But I He's all right. He's all right. Have you tried him? Have you tried him? Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Won't he hold your hand in the midnight hour? Won't he guide? I'm, 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 I'm 67 years old. I can't jump like I used to. But if I could jump, I, I'd jump. If I could run, I'm a servant. 
I'm glad to be a servant. He could have used anybody else, but he called me to be a servant. He could have been able to call anybody better than me. The reason I'm a faithful servant because I know he passed up people better by nature than I can ever be. Somebody in here know he picked you up from drugs. He picked you up from the streets. He picked you up from sin. Then you ought to serve him to the best of your ability. You owe him. You owe him. You owe him. Your best servant. Serve on. Serve on. Serve on. Mothers pray on. Serve on. Sisters shout on. Serve 